This is What's an X.AI. It's a generative AI platform built to push the boundaries of generative AI in a safe, secure, and trusted manner. With it, you can use state-of-the-art large language models, design, test, and manage your prompts, deploy LLM APIs, and fine tune your own LLM models. But how exactly does this all work? I mean, generative AI is great and all, but wouldn't it be amazing if we could break it all down and explain the pieces of the puzzle to get you up to speed fast? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Give me six minutes. Ready? Start the timer. First up, models. Underpinning the generative AI phenomenon, on, we have a set of supersized machine learning models that can perform a range of tasks. They can generate text, images, video, audio, code, and more. These models have been trained on huge amounts of data to be able to perform well on a range of general purpose tasks. We'll call these models foundation models. Think of them as the base of a house. They're a great starting point and provide solid foundations. If you need them to perform better on specific tasks though, we can pick up the model training where it left off, but with data that's aligned to what you need to do. This process is called fine tuning. Using the house analogy, this is akin to adding in all the fixtures and designs you might like to have in your home. In practice, this could be fine tuning the model to answer questions on your products or having it write code in a proprietary language or work with an internal API. Now, large language models fall under the foundation model umbrella. That's all well and good, but how exactly do we use them? This is where prompting comes in. Fundamentally, LLMs are consecutively predicting the next word in a sequence. The input sequence to an LLM is usually referred to as a prompt. It's what we're asking the model to do, be it a question, a task, or an instruction. The year I finished university, I went on a huge trip to Europe. Now, it just so happens that one of the final destinations that I found myself in was Bulgaria. I was running a little late and most of my friends had gone off to find a local pizza joint. Now, I don't know about you, but my Bulgarian ain't that sharp. Even after drawing pizza air pictures and performing speech charades to a few locals, I somehow found myself in their lounge room watching a talent show and eating dumplings. Getting the instructions right is important. Likewise, designing good prompts is critical to getting LLMs to perform well. This has led to the rise of prompt engineering. It's not really engineering in the traditional sense per se, but really more so focused on passing foundation model input instructions that it's going to understand. Prompts can range from simple questions or more sophisticated requests like few shot prompts where you give the model a number of examples with expected outputs. Doing so has proven to improve the quality of the outputs that the LLM is able to produce. Great, so we can answer a bunch of questions by passing prompts to foundation models, but what if we wanted our model to answer questions based on a PDF or text document or some HTML? How would we go about doing that? This is where embeddings come in. I'm about to drop a bombshell. LLMs don't actually understand words. What they do understand is numbers. So what would happen if we could convert those CSVs, PDFs, and other text documents into a code that the LLM could understand? This is exactly how supercharged LLMs work. In fact, in practice, this is how we're able to perform searches across documents using LLMs without the overhead of fine tuning the foundation model itself. We can take a PDF and convert it into an embedding. Think of this as just just a big list of numbers which represent the text included in the original PDF. These embeddings can then be stored inside of a vector database, a specially designed database which can hold embeddings, which are usually represented as vectors. Some popular ones include ChromaDB, Pinecone, and Milbus. The embedding is used to represent an index to that specific document or segment of the document. We can then query the database by converting a prompt to an embedding, then finding the document with the closest match using the document's embedding. Blending vector databases in LLMs opens up a wider range of use cases than using LLMs alone and works particularly great when you have fast changing data. So far we've gone through foundation models, prompts and embeddings, but it's starting to get a little complicated, no? So how do we connect all these pieces together? Well, this is where chains come in. There's been a bunch of open source development in the field of large language models. Langchain, one of the most popular open source libraries has been pivotal to helping drive the field forward. It's a Python and TypeScript library that helps you connect all the pieces of the LLM puzzle together. It allows you to chain together LLMs, including those from what's next, perform prompt formatting and leverage vector databases together with ease. Through it, you can format your prompts using prompt templates. You can also leverage chat memory, a similar technique to how chat GPT works. This means that your foundation model session will have access to what you've previously said in the conversation. Langchain also gives you the ability to integrate foundation models into active environments using agents. This makes foundation models a lot more practical. Through it, you can give your LLM access to math tools, coding environments, and the web, opening up a whole new world of possibility for your use cases. And that is generative AI in six-ish minutes. Ready to get started, click the link in the description below to learn a little more. Editor Nick here, that was uh, well under six minutes, just saying.